In this lesson, I'm going to discuss some of the popular knee solutions for a 3D character rig. When you bend your knee, the condyles of your femur slide in these grooves that are on your tibia. On screen, I'm simulating this rotation on a zebra skeleton. This skeleton is provided by Ryan Kingsley. It can be found in the ZBrush content folder. When you bend your knee, what eventually ends up happening is that the entire bottom side of the condyles of your femur are exposed. This adds length to the perimeter of your leg joints on the front side. As you bend further to simulate a crouch, even more of the condyles of the femur adds to the length of this front outside perimeter of the leg joints. By the time you get into a full crouch pose, not only the bottom, but now part of the backside of the condyles of the femur are almost completely contributing to the perimeter on the front side, and perhaps also some of the top of the tibia too. So this is a lot of lengthening of the front perimeter of the leg joints and it ends up giving the knee a box-like shape on a full crouch. Now, there is actually fat, a tendon, and a bone called the patella that sit in front of all of this to actually create the outline of your knee from the front. But this tendon, which has the most superficial visual impact on the bottom part of your knee, also has to stretch to accommodate this lengthening. In 3D, we attempt to simulate this lengthening and box-like shape with corrective deformation or some weight painting tricks. Because by default, the typical two joint system that we use in 3D produces a sharp angle at the knee on a knee bend, which is far off from the box-like shape needed. I'm going to go through four example solutions for the knee so we can review what the best solution will be. First, we have a regular two chain leg system that counts on a second child joint to represent the knee. For this first solution, vertex points on the upper part of the leg that represent the thigh follow the first joint. Points on the lower extremity of the leg that represent the shins follow the second joint. And points in between that represent the knee have weighting that is distributed to give each joint about 50% influence on the central points. This is more often than not what you will find on any 3D character rig. Skinning by itself cannot make your characters have a realistic looking knee bend. Its weakness lies in the fact that there is just too much rotation of the geometry at the knee favoring either the first or second joint. So this approach relies heavily on corrective deformations to simulate a correct deformation of the knee when the leg bends. At this stage, another thing I want you to take note of is how much penetration is happening between the calves and the hamstrings of the leg as the leg simulates a full crouch. Almost half of the lower leg and upper leg are penetrating each other. A lot of work will have to be done with corrective deformation to minimize this penetration. With real human anatomy, the femur compensates for the bulge of the calves with an arc shape in its profile. This allows more room for your calves to fit on a full crouch. This, however, is not something that is smart to attempt to simulate with a 3D thigh joint. It is best for a 3D thigh joint to remain straight for rigging. This penetration becomes especially important when you are relying on cloth simulators to animate your clothes. If you do not take heat to this penetration and resolve it, the thigh and the shin part of your simulated fabric will flip out when it has to penetrate itself to accommodate this penetrated pose of the upper and lower leg. Let's take a look at our second solution. This is another two chain solution that differs from the first in that the second joint is closer to the back of the character's leg. With this solution, Penetration of the calves and thighs happens slightly later as you pose the skeleton to simulate a full crouch pose. And even though we eventually get penetration of the calves and the hamstrings, it is a lot less than the penetration received with the previous two chain solution, where the knee joint is right in the center of the geometry. With this solution, however, 
the collapsing of the volume of the knee is even worse. So also in this case, we have to rely heavily on corrective deformation to preserve the volume at the knee and also to avoid the less penetration we are receiving at the thighs and the calves. For the third solution, we have a two joint chain solution with an additional end joint branching out of the second joint. This new end joint sits right on top of the second joint, its parent. I have scaled up the size of this third joint to help distinguish it from the second joint that it is a child of. Even though it is directly superimposed over the second joint, it has an important function that separates it from the second joint. When the second joint rotates backward to simulate flexion of the lower leg or a knee bend, this third joint counters the rotation of the second joint, so it rotates in the opposite direction. This is accomplished with the use of an expression showcased on the screen. The expression is basically saying that for every unit of rotation the second joint makes, the third one should rotate half as much in the opposite direction. I've turned on the local rotation axis of both joints to show you how the third joint is reacting to this expression. The objective here is to skin the vertex points on the mesh that represent the knee to this counter rotating joint. This minimizes how much rotation is happening to the vertex points that represent the knee on a full bend of the knee. This helps to preserve volume at the knee to better simulate a box-like result. But it has the same penetration issues as our first and second solution. Penetration that once again has to be resolved with corrective deformations. The double knee joint solution is the last solution I will discuss in this course and the more favorable one. This system counts on a three joint chain solution. The second joint is positioned at the upper part of the knee, a little above where the condyles of the femur are located, and the third joint at the lower part of the knee, around where the head of the tibia is located. Vertex points are distributed as expected, with each joint impacting the geometry closest to it. When the leg bends, the third joint should be doing most, if not all, of the bending. This solution perfectly preserves the volume of the knee, leaving it completely unaffected by the bending of the knee. The end result best represents what is happening anatomically. And as far as penetration is concerned, there is close to none, even without a corrective deformation solution. Once a corrective deformation is applied, we have a perfect solution that will play very well with cloth simulators. So this is the solution I will be settling on for this character's knee in this course. So the important question is, can advanced skeleton be used for a double knee joint solution? Yes, and it works very well. This double knee joint solution also does not impact the ability to use motion capture in any way. Here are some examples showcasing this. The first is of a double knee joint solution rig using advanced skeletons walk designer. And the second is an example of it using regular motion capture from the advanced skeleton motion capture library. So some of you are probably wondering if a double knee joint solution works so well for the knee, why not use it for the elbow? This is not necessary because the range of motion when bending the elbow is not as extreme as the knee. If you isolate your elbow's rotation by preventing your wrist and shoulders from rotating, you can only bend your elbow to produce approximately 135 degrees from a straight arm. Any additional rotating to allow the wrist to touch the chest would require rotating the upper arm or the wrist. There's close to no reason to ever rotate the elbow of your character rig to 180 degrees, unless you are doing some extreme stylized animation for a smear frame or something like that. In which case you probably wouldn't care about preserving anatomically correct forms. So the type of penetration we get with the legs on a knee rotation will rarely ever happen if you are posing your character correctly. And even if it does, some basic corrective deformation will resolve that penetration. 
All right, so that's it for this lesson. In the next lesson, I will go over my project files and modifications I made to this model to prepare it for advanced skeleton. See you in the next lesson.